So as I'm winterizing the camper, my uh, water pump starts acting up again, just like you guys saw back in the summer when I filmed the fix for this thing. Um, the fix did work for a few months, no issues at all, but now it's doing it again. And uh, I'll talk about the internals of this switch here in a little bit and uh, maybe talk to you guys about why unplugging it and plugging it in uh, it worked in this situation. So let's put the new switch in and then I'll give you guys some info on where I purchased it. To make this easier to show you guys, um, I'm going to remove the whole pump. If, uh, if I wasn't filming, my plan was to, uh, here's the new part, was to remove the pump switch, uh, the pressure switch on the end of this uh, impeller housing that has the, the pump um, gears, if you want to, want to call them, or impeller. Um, I wasn't going to unbolt this. I'm just going to take the switch off. And uh, I could do that on the car. On the car. On the RV. You have to forgive me. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a car mechanic. And uh, I tend to call things cars. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is a bus. But anyway, uh, I'm going to remove this whole thing and do it on the workbench so you guys can see what I'm doing. Just cutting a couple of zip ties right there that hold the wiring and uh, try to get you a little bit closer shot of what I'm doing. Okay, first things first, let's talk about this kit. Uh, this kit I got off of Amazon and again I'll put the link in the description of this video uh, it is made this switch is made by by Sureflow and uh, the part number I'm not sure if that is a good part number for Sureflow or for Amazon but this is the switch that I'm putting in And according to the instructions, of course, they want you to change the whole housing, as you can see. Uh, the issue that I have with changing the housing is they did not supply me with a gasket, number one. And number two, uh, reading some other people's repairs where they've done this, these screws um, are snapping on them. So I don't want to do it that way. I just want to change the electrical switch um, which is what I'm going to do alright so the electrical switch I'm not changing the pump housing uh, the center screw on this just an FYI this is an adjustment screw and it says right on the housing that it says does not change flow or operating pressure it adjusts the shutoff only so there's a shutoff pressure that this changes. I'm not going to mess with that. It should be set properly. Uh, we'll see how it reacts on the RV. And really the true tests are, are going to be next year. I'm not going to be able to run this pump very much. But uh, we'll put some, some more antifreeze in the holding tank, which is the method for winterizing this. And um, we'll run the water in various locations inside when I'm done and make sure that it, it reacts properly. Um, internal to this here's your pressure switch right here and this actually moves so there's like a plunger there and I imagine when I separate this there's there's gonna be a spring and some other mechanisms that'll come apart so I need to be careful I need to pay attention to what I'm doing uh, I don't know what I want to do here let's let's take the old one apart first just in case I do want to change the whole house Uh, let's talk about the the switch here for a second. Um, in the automotive field, I see this all the time, where you uh, go to a connector. If you guys remember, on on the uh, on the video, I was pushing on this 
lead right here and so what that suggested was a bad connection between the two and you know unplugging it plugging it back in seemed to fix it and it did for a while but the thing about this that I've learned over the years you have your male terminals inside of here and then this is your female terminal and what happens when you are pushing on say the the female terminal the connector you're actually stressing the male pin inside and so what may seem like a connection issue right here at the connector is actually not and it's inside the switch itself or inside of the component so I see this on solenoids I see it on relays I see it um, you name it a component that looks like it has a bad connector but it really is the component itself so just kind of picture your your male connector and your female connector and when you're when you're wiggling that female connector you're actually moving the male pin down inside of the mechanism what I could have done is caused a contact um, correction uh, in other words I made good contact inside of this switch just by messing with it and um, that is my absolute suspicion with this um, because these terminals look fine the pins are not corroded at all uh, there was that one what I described as a, a dark spot or burn mark on the video is actually just on the plastic itself right there and uh, this connector looks totally fine <clears throat> so anyway uh, let's see how this comes apart I'm going to use a hand screwdriver I do not want to um, break these so we'll just see how they, they go that one's nice and free no problem with that one either okay good I'm liking this all right we'll go the rest of the way with my drill see why they have you change the housing now maybe a little bit different redesign inside here possibly but here's your switch Let's see what's underneath this that's your switch right there We may, I may have to change the housing, guys. And let's just make sure I'm doing this properly. Pay attention to which way that's sat. Okay. So it's like this on the vehicle. Electrical connections were up top. Yeah. Sat like that. stayed in there that time not a problem see what this one looks like on the inside we may have to change the housing because this this looks different to me here this mechanism inside it's like a redesign let's see what's inside this bad boy in the directions 
They say do not remove the switch. Okay, cool. That's the same. I am just changing the switch. I'm not changing the housing. Let's get this little rubber guy out of here. We'll put that back on there. It's exactly the same. So there's another some kind of check valve. That's not Oh, that just popped out. Okay. There's a whole other assembly inside of here. So let's uh let's take these pieces out too. So we have this and then a spring. And then the little plunger that I was pushing on from the inside. Okay. <clears throat> we'll change those parts too. All right. Remember, electrical contacts I want up top. Okay, let's put the new stuff back in. Just a little pressed fit. And we have some pieces of crap in there. And this plunger. And then we said. <clears throat> The electrical switch this is my old one. Get this up top. Oh, well, that's coming apart here too. I don't want that. Okay, something to be careful of. I, I wasn't uh, aware of this that the new switch is actually coming apart up in here which we don't want we'll take the old one apart up there this might be why they say don't change the switch now the other thing is I don't know if I want this on the switch itself or in the housing I don't think it matters it sits around there I could have changed the housing again <clears throat> I didn't want to open it up because I don't have a gasket so I'm okay with that repair that I just did uh, this connector again goes through the housing not that that really matters much and plugs into here 
one of the uh, the instructions are telling you to not mix up your wiring guys this is a switch it doesn't matter when this thing closes these two wires right here become one regardless of which way you put them so not an issue there uh, I have to replace the end of this with a new male terminal this did not come in the kit guys so something to be aware of is the they give you one new connector to the switch and they didn't put a male terminal on the other side did it come in the kit let's see nope it did not they gave you a a butt connector that you can cut the wire and splice it we'll put a male terminal back on it try to keep the same length of wire that was there not that this is all that critical certainly use the butt connector is not an issue at all I'm just putting it back the way I found it okay let's put it back on the RV and see how it does what else do I want to do while I'm here? Let's see if we can look at this switch. Because that one was coming apart. Let's see what's inside this thing. definitely some corrosion on that switch you can see it now so it still could have just been been that that really all I needed to do was unplug this and plug it back in about 10 or 15 more times kind of tough to clean that terminal when it's you know inside so this is your switch assembly here's your switch right there um, this is just like a hinge point So that sits like that. Your adjustment screw right here, what you're setting is the tension of this piece. And this is the piece that's going to push upward. So when pressure underneath pushes on this, it lifts this mechanism inside. There's a, a hinge there and of course with this bolted together this piece would stay intact and see if I can show you the switch so this this stuff in here is not an issue this rust or is that some type of a Nope, that's rust from this spring. Uh, the switch itself though is here. And it looks like it's completely insulated from any water or anything like that. I uh, really want to get that thing out of there. I want you guys to see that. Now if I can without destroying it. There's your switch. Nice. There we go. So if anybody wants to get creative, we got some numbers on this switch.
Yeah, it's pretty badly corroded too, guys. It very, very well could be that uh, I never needed this. And then it was just the corrosion. If you look at this top part especially, like compare it to this, the color of this compared to that. Let me scrape some of this off for you, let you see it. And when you unplug a connector, plug it back in, this is the kind of stuff that you kind of are cleaning off. Eh, really wasn't too bad. Let's see what the other side looks like. Hard to say, hard to say. We could uh, could drill this rivet, take the internals apart. But there's definitely a little discoloration on these. I bet you I could have taken this apart and just cleaned this. Seriously, I bet you I could take taking this all apart, clean these off real good with sandpaper, and then plug my leads back in. Although, um, so which one's new? I'm a little bit concerned. This this leads new, so I'm not worried about that one. But this one, given what I just saw on that side, see this looks nice and clean though. And what I can do is tighten this this terminal up a little bit just by squeezing it. Alright, so you guys make the call on how you want to handle this in the future, I think, and now that I know what I'm dealing with, I think I would have maybe taken it apart, but uh, that's a, a may or may not fix, you know, it really depends on the internals here of this. Um, after looking at this and, you know, talking about stressing the male pins, these would be your male pins, and this was the one down here when I was pushing on it and it's the one that had the most corrosion on it gotta rethink what I was saying that it may have actually just been the connection itself I'd really like to take this apart I'm about to do it And if you really wanted to, you could totally rebuild this thing. Oh yeah, this switch is shot. The internals of this switch are absolutely horrible. Let's take these mechanisms out. So my contact, this is uh, normally uh, closed the way it's spring-loaded closed. So right now I have continuity between here. But what I want to do is take this out so you guys can see this this switch mechanism. And this will never go back together. I don't really care. But I want you guys to see this contact.
that's the one side and here's the other so these two guys they touch and it's I mean it's not real bad but I'm glad I changed the switch guys I think it, this is completely completely fixable although I just broke the housing right there there's some green corrosion there but yeah I don't know well there you go for any of you guys that want to know what was inside one of those that's it right there and I'm glad I changed it. I mean, shoot, for 19 bucks, <clears throat> that's what this kit cost me, I think. Uh, they gave you some new screws, butt connector, and that's for changing the housing. Um, looks to me like they expected the... See, these are... These are um, self tappers probably that are in here but then they give you look at this it's like they, they anticipate an issue once you take this apart they give you um, longer screws so basically when you're done you're using a, a nut and a bolt for this probably because they expect these to either break or to uh, not uh, go through there again they gave you four of those but then there's a few that go into the motor housing too and these would be the ones that would have a high probability of snapping the ones that go into the aluminum housing so there's three of those and they they give you uh, yeah they give you all the screws three of one kind and three of another, three nuts, a wire, um, butt connector, and then this little plastic piece that goes through the housing part here where the wire goes, which I don't think is important at all. Um, yeah, my recommendation, I think, guys, after looking at, at this is to do it the way I did. Just change the switch itself. Leave the housing alone. Why change it? There was no leaks with this housing at all the the pump itself worked fine when it was running I'm not worried about the impellers that are in here that do the pumping uh, I am comfortable with the way that I did this let's get this back on the RV and see how it performs I wasn't even paying attention I was in the garage putting that together it is now snowing we're gonna do this in the snow By the way, I did not need to loosen that bottom hose clamp. Just an FYI for you guys. Okay, electrical connections. Ground. And power. And I expect my holding tank is empty right now, so I don't know if this is going to work, but... Yeah, that's going to keep pumping. 
So I got nothing in my holding tank. I drained it. And I gotta tighten this clamp up. I'll go get some some more antifreeze and put a couple gallons in the holding tank and then we'll do some final checks at least it's the pumps running as you can hear but it is running dry right now Now there are other ways to do this. You don't have to put the antifreeze in your fresh water tank and use the pump that way. You can actually separate the line where we were working and run a hose into a container external. That's the way I used to do it with my old camper. Uh, but this is easier and it's what they recommend to do. Okay, let's see what we got here. I don't wanna lose this antifreeze, so I'm gonna catch it in here. Turn the pump on up here. We got some air in the system. Sure. shut off I got this whole thing full of air so Come on. Turning off would be key. <clears throat> I'm gonna go inside and open one of the water valves inside and see all kinds of <clears throat> air in here still let's shut the pump off here let's go inside and uh, try to bleed some of this air out I'm hoping that shuts off That is not shutting off. That is not good. There it is, it's off. pump shut off but get some flow out of here there we go some 
water air bound up in there. Nice, it shut off. Ah, oh, it's so much better. some air in this line. Awesome. One more time, let's hit all the faucets. You guys can listen to the pump. Cool. Still have air in the system, which I'm fighting. Not sure with that water draining in the shower if you guys heard the pump shut off. Listen again. Awesome. Well, hopefully that picked up. I'm fighting a little bit of air in the system because I drained everything out. And with only six gallons that I put in the uh, fresh water tank, there might be an issue with the level uh, because I was looking at the feed down to the pump and I'm, I'm seeing air running from the fresh water tank into the pump. So I'm having a little bit of difficulty there, but this is definitely a fix guys. It is much more stable. It is uh, not real choppy in the way that it reacts. And, uh, you know, really the, the test is going to be in the summertime when I I have a, a good supply of, of water available to everything, but everything's good. I like the fix that I did. I'll put the links in the description of this video again for you guys. You know where to get the parts. And uh, hopefully you guys like that. Uh, there'll be more stuff to come on this RV. I have a whole bunch already. I just got to figure out when to get time to edit it and uh, upload it. So again, thanks for joining me. And I will see you next time.